setting. So perfect. Stage is yours, sure. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, so what I'll be covering today is the Meta Presence platform and the Meta building blocks, uh, both of which are covered fairly extensively in the GorillaZilla course. Uh, but uh, I won't just be covering an overview of what they are. You know, I won't be providing just some general information. I'm going to be covering things specific to how do you use the presence platform and the building blocks primarily in the context of a hackathon. So a hackathon is different than a regular development because you have a very limited time. You don't have weeks and weeks or months and months. Uh, you just have a very compressed time to not only ideate and plan out your idea, but to actually develop your idea. So, for example, if you have 48 hours for the hackathon, probably 24 of those hours will just be to get your ideas settled. And then the other 24 hours will be for actual development. So it's a completely different way of thinking about how to create your application. Uh, so I'll be covering primarily things to watch out for. How do you get past blockers? That's a that's a big thing with hackathons. You, you have build errors, you get blockers, you can't move beyond. So I'll be talking about some pitfalls, how to avoid those, and how to best leverage the meta uh, presence platform and the building blocks to get an edge, to basically win back like maybe six hours or 18 hours. So it's gonna be kind of a, a real good tips, tricks, secrets to uh, a different way of development, which might not be the way you develop for a regular software development over a, a few weeks or months, but it's very specific to how do we get this proof of concept out that looks good, that works well quickly, all right? Uh, before we dive into that, just a quick little introduction for those of you who don't know uh, who I am. So I've done uh, a lot of uh, courses uh, before. I've got my own uh, mixed reality uh, software development firm that I've had since uh, 2016. I've written uh, several books. This is one of them over here. Oh, looks like I'm disappearing. Maybe it doesn't want me to show my book. <laughs> That's okay, but uh, I've got a... a I also have two uh, physical like VR experience centers in the Seattle area where we got, you know, lots of uh, people coming to play VR games, mixed reality games. Uh, yeah, so I've done quite a bit. And then of course with XR Bootcamp, I've done many, many courses, many workshops, done stuff for Microsoft HoloLens, done stuff for uh, Meta Presence Platform, Meta Mixed Reality. Uh, so that's just a quick overview of who I am. And then of course, those on the call may know me most recently for some of the coursework I've done with uh, GorillaZilla and uh, uh, Meta Mixed Reality, which is kind of the next big push for Meta. First, we started out with VR. Now we're going to Mixed Reality, and that's all kind of going towards uh, glasses, Mixed Reality glasses that will be coming at some point in the future. We don't know exactly when, but we know that's where the world is heading to. All right. So things you're doing today is very relevant towards that future, which we're very quickly converging towards. All right, so Meta Presence Platform. So we'll start with Meta Presence Platform first, and then we'll go to Building Block second. But the two are kind of interrelated, so there'll be a little bit of overlap between the two, OK? Uh, so things to watch out for. Let's start with things to watch out for, because one of the biggest headaches when you are starting a hackathon is that you might have lots of bugs, editor issues, just like real big headaches that will cause uh, just some pain. Okay. So in order to minimize the pain, there's some things that, uh, you can do. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, this little tip is after loading the meta presence platform for the first time in your editor, uh, you may actually have to restart your editor. I notice sometimes when you just start working with it right away, it'll, you'll get build errors. You'll get some strange errors that there's, it's not really, uh, there's no solution for it. the only solution is just to restart your, Unity editor. So, and honestly, sometimes when you're having very weird bugs, the one of the first things I always try to do is just restart the editor. About 30% of the time, that fixes the issue, right? So, it's not a real issue, it's just something, a, a weird Unity issue. Uh, the other thing is not listed on this slide, but uh, it would be great if we're all working on the same uh, SDK, uh, Meta Presence Platform SDK version. Together, it's not strictly necessary, but it would help a lot. Uh, for example, uh, V66, it's been out, I think we're on V67 now. 
uh, or V68 as far as the SDK. I, 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 actually, I don't know that V68 is out yet. It might be the V67 uh, for the SDK. But if everyone, let's say, were to work on the same SDK version like V66, that will help your questions be answered a lot faster because all the mentors will have kind of the knowledge for uh, a single platform and a lot of the mistakes or a lot of the errors that come up might be the same ones over and over. So that will help everyone to move a lot faster. Of course, if there's something specific you need in let's say V67, okay, that's fine. You can use V67, but if it's just general mixed reality, if you're not doing something that is very, very hyper specific to a certain uh, version, then uh, I would recommend sticking to V66 uh, at this point in time. Same thing with your Unity version. Uh, the 2022.3 uh, um, LTS will be your best bet. Uh, I believe that we have, uh, Farron can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe we have documentation for the specific version to use. That way everyone's on the same version. Again, that will help a lot with making sure that you don't get stuck. All right? Exactly. That's actually a very important thing is uh, please, please uh, check the learning resources on the Notion page uh, that uh, we are specifically sharing which Unity version that we expect you to use. Why it is important, if especially you are a solo developer, you probably don't have thought or asked each other before uh, what kind of um, uh, Unity version you will use. Of course, if you are using Unreal, it's much more complicated, so we will leave, leave up to you. But for the learning resources, uh, under learning resources, we clearly state that Unity 2022.3.30 LTS which I will share that on the uh, Zoom chat right now, just to make sure that we are um, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah, the most exactly. important part. Exactly. It's so important. Every single Unity version, all the thousands of versions has its own different issues. <laughs> and so if everyone's on the same Unity version, it'll be super easy to just say, hey, these are the three common problems you might have, and then everyone will be all set. Otherwise, there'll be literally 3,000 different possible issues that might show up. <laughs> All right, so uh, the other thing is if you're on a Windows PC, if, if you have the choice to use between a Mac and a PC, I highly recommend a Windows PC for one reason, and that's that you can use the Quest link to, to quickly iterate. It'll save you 50% of your time. It's such a big time saver. Of course, if you only have a Mac, it's fine. You can still build to the device. It's not, it's not a, a deal breaker by any means, but if you have the ability to choose between Windows and Mac, uh, using Windows for Quest Link is huge. If for those of you who don't know what Quest Link is, you just plug your Quest into your PC or use Wi-Fi, and straight from the Unity editor, you can make a change and quickly beam it to your headset, try it out, try hand tracking, try spatial mapping, try meshing, try basically everything you can do on the headset, you can do directly from the Unity editor, and it saves you having to build, right? You can make a small little tweak, test it, small little tweak, test it. So things that you can do in maybe one minute in the editor, it might take you 20 minutes if you try to build it and test it each time. And then you don't even know why it's not working. Whereas in, in the editor, if something's not working, you can actually see, go to the scene view, or you can look at your code and you can see exactly why it's not working. So it removes all the mystery and it's a huge, huge time saver. So I would highly recommend that. That's the second bullet point on here. Uh, shared spatial anchors. So. We all know uh, that if you're building a mixed reality experience, spatial anchors is a very key component to that, especially if you're building a multi-user application. Uh, I talk about shared spatial anchors a little bit uh, more as to what I recommend, so I'll get to that in a bit. But for now, be aware that if you're doing shared spatial anchors, there's a lot of setup outside of Unity. It's a very big uh, time suck. And so I've got a recommendation for that that I'll share uh, a little bit uh, later. All right, the, the last point on here is that there's so many different ways to do the same thing. If you look online, if you, if you look in the sample scenes, if you look at the building blocks, there's literally sometimes 50 different ways to do the same exact thing with the presence platform. And it can get very confusing very fast about if you read one blog online about how to do hand tracking and then you get stuck and then you read another blog, it'll be a completely different solution because there's so many different ways you can do it. So what I would, recommend is to consolidate what you're doing and use just the sample scenes or the building blocks uh, that's included with the meta presence platform that will help to kind of narrow down 
uh, what you're doing so that it's kind of the, the same, you know, across not only it's great for mentors to help you, uh, but it also help you when you're looking for something specific online or trying to troubleshoot your problem. Uh, try not to do a custom solution that you read from somebody's blog online because it might be a completely different way of doing something and you'll get stuck and nobody people might have a hard time figuring out how to help you because it's not the, the normal path uh, to do it. All right. Uh, samples, I'll talk about samples in a little bit, uh, but all the samples you can download via the Unity Package Manager. That's the note at the bottom here. All right, so how do you get started quickly and avoid some common mistakes? Uh, what I would recommend for the Presence platform is you download it using this uh, SDK.all, uh, uh, using the Unity Package Manager. Uh, that's also what I do in GorillaZilla. So for those of you who've done GorillaZilla, you already know this pathway. Uh, otherwise, if you try to download the packages individually, you might not know which ones you need, which ones you don't need, unless you're already very experienced with the MetaPresence platform, then you can pick and choose what you want. But if, you, if you're if you not experienced, if this is your first time, or maybe you're, you're still a little bit new with the Presence platform, just download it all. The, the worst thing that can happen is your, your app package will be a few hundred megabytes bigger than it needs to be, but for a hackathon, nobody cares, right? It's not about trying to make the smallest size or trying to, it's just about how do we get this out quickly? So just download it all, it'll save you a ton of time, then you don't have to think about what's missing or how do you need to go out and get this other SDK. And then once you download the SDK, go ahead and download the sample uh, scenes. The sample scenes are a huge time saver because Meta already did everything for you. Like if you go into the uh, uh, mixed reality sample scenes or hand tracking sample scenes, there's already a really nice things you can grab, you can throw, you can play with, and all of those setups are already done for you. So if you already know, yeah, I'm, I want this thing I can grab and I want to do all these interactions, start with a sample scene as a template and that will really help speed things up um, a lot. So that's the, the third bullet point over here. S build one of the sample scenes right away. The reason why I say build it right away, even if you don't want to explore the sample scene, it doesn't matter. Build a sample scene to your headset right away, because if there's any errors at all, any build errors, it'll show up early because you want to squash those build errors as soon as possible. If somehow your PC has the wrong Android version, or maybe you, you forgot to download Android, or there's a million settings that you may have forgotten to set but if you before you start hacking at all if you just immediately built one of the pre-baked sample scenes to your headset those errors will show up and you can quickly squash those uh, uh very very fast or the mentors can come and help you and then that way another benefit of that is that then if you start developing and you build and it doesn't work now you know okay it's nothing wrong with my environment i was able to build first but then I added this thing and now I can't build. Now you know where the problem might be. So it helps to really narrow down the issue. And we all know fixing issues is the easy part. It's finding the issues that's the hard part, right? Fixing an issue might be 10 minutes. Sometimes finding the issue might take two hours. <laughs> so you wanna really position yourself well for identifying what, has what just caused the problem and how can I quickly fix it, all right? Uh, definitely the last bullet point on here utilize the meta tool it used to be called the oculus tool i think in the gorilla zilla uh, version it used to be called the oculus tool now it's called the meta tool use that it's in your settings it'll automatically just do everything for you it'll change to il2cpp it'll uh, change it to arm v64 it'll change the minimum android all these weird settings that you have to do it'll just do it all for you so that you don't have to worry about that all right so do that get all the settings correct build a sample scene and then if there's any issues grab a mentor or see what the issues are, see if you can fix it yourself. So that's that'll help you get started very quickly and save you a lot of time later on and put you ahead of the competition. All right, so uh, some of the best sample scenes. So I mentioned earlier, use sample scenes to uh, as templates, right? So uh, if you're wanting to do anything related to your scene, anything related to a mesh of your environment or hey, I want a, a virtual avatar to sit on my sofa, or I want to automatically put cups and plates and dishes on the table in front of me, or anything that's related to your environment, uh, definitely try all the Mixed Reality Utility Kit or MRUK sample scenes. Those are fantastic, uh, and they're just really fun to work with. So if, if you have any 
ideas at all that might leverage the space in your environment for mixed reality, like the actual objects, uh, try out the MRUK scenes. It'll show you really quick how to get started with that. And then you can use that MRUK uh, scene as a template, all right? Also, if you're gonna be doing anything with hands or hand interactions, uh, definitely test out the hand interaction samples. It's great, shows you how to press buttons, shows you how to grab things, how to interact with things at a distance using a beam, or how to interact with them up close just by being able to grab it up close. So uh, try out some of those. Of course, depending on what else you wanna do, there's so many other sample scenes uh, that you can try out as well, including spatial anchors, uh, things like that. Uh, and then I think in the next slide, maybe, yeah, later on, I'll tell you how you can overlay multiple sample scenes if you kind of want to build your template up. All right, so I mentioned earlier something about spatial anchors. Uh, so for prototyping purposes, unless you're already used to using shared spatial anchors, I actually recommend you don't even try to mess with shared spatial anchors. You can still share spatial anchors using this other trick. It's called cloud saved spatial anchors, okay? The difference is when you do traditional shared spatial anchors, you've got to register your app on the development portal online. There's this whole approval process. You have got to share ID. It's just, I, I guarantee you, you won't be able to get by with under five to eight hours in just the shared anchor spatial anchors part alone, unless you've already done it many times or unless you're very confident in it. The cloud spatial anchors uh, it allows you to just, you don't have to do anything outside of the editor. You don't have to register your app or anything like that. You can just save it locally to your device, or you can save it to the cloud. And then if you save it to the cloud, another device with the same login can download that same spatial anchors. And essentially you've got shared spatial anchors. I've built many, many multi co-located multi-user applications like this. It is by far the easiest way to get started. It's maybe not what you want to deploy to uh, the app store or the enterprise use case. It's you can always switch to shared spatial anchors later. But for a hackathon, this is my recommended pathway. You don't have to use this pathway, but it's what I would recommend. It's like 30 minutes versus five hours, right? It'll save you a lot of time. But the, the key catch is every headset you use has to be logged in with the same account. It can't be a different account. You've got to figure out whose account or maybe create a separate uh, account and log in every headset with the same account so you can download those anchors and everyone can be in the same anchored space all right so for, again for not clear, maybe we can also say that photon team and meta team will be at the hackathon so if you have any questions we know that making and collocated or shared spatial anchors is uh, quite an ambitious uh, decision in a hackathon yes. but uh, we got you covered with these experts so if you have any problems Feel free to reach out to them during tech. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're magical. Spatial anchors are magical. I love them. Uh, but you do, I just want to warn you guys, like it takes a lot of time if you're doing the shared, the traditional shared spatial anchors. So I would recommend you either uh, fake it with local anchors, like every headset creates its own local anchors in a certain spot. And that's, we're all pretending to be aligned or you use cloud anchors, which is not really uh, th that hard, but yeah, shared anchors are great, but if you have weeks, not hours. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, yes. And then I talked about combining sample scenes. So I mentioned the mixed reality utility kit. If you want to use walls, tables, sofas, things like that. And then I also mentioned the hand tracking. If you want to use, you know, hand interactions, but then what if you wanted to combine the two? Well, you can actually additively load multiple scenes. So you just load one sample scene in your Unity hierarchy, drag and drop the other sample scene in Unity hierarchy, and now boom, you've got both capabilities together, uh, but there will be some duplicate items between the two, like for example, OVR manager, you can't have two of them. So you'll just wanna cherry pick and drag and drop the things you want into just one scene. So cherry pick some MRUK stuff, and then cherry pick some uh, hand interaction stuff. So basically like, why build it all yourself if somebody else has already built all these things, right? Like there's no point wasting your time that, that with the hackathon, we don't want you to recreate the wheel. We want your unique ideas, the magical ideas that you have to flourish and for you to work on those creative magical ideas, stuff like hand tracking and spatial mapping and spatial anchors. Like 
that's all old, right? It's, that's just the tools. So you want to save your time by recycling what's already there using the sample scenes, using building blocks. And then that way you have a lot of time to focus on your magical, unique ideas. And that will really uh, allow you to stand out from the rest. Okay. So that's another, another really neat trick uh, for you to uh, keep in mind. All right. So now moving on. So that was the presence platform primarily focused on the sample scenes that are included with the presence platform. And now we're going to be talking about uh, building blocks. So building blocks, uh, again, if you've done GorillaZilla, we heavily use building blocks. It's a very big time saver. If you want to quickly uh, uh, put uh, different components in without you having to read a bunch of documentation and understand how to build each of these uh, from scratch. Okay, so definitely something you want to leverage uh, for your project. Uh, but the one warning I have is don't use building blocks to try to figure out what you want to do. Only use building blocks after you have already figured out what you want to do. So for example, in the previous slide or in the previous uh, talk, we heard from Shapes XR, right? They had a great recommendation. It's like, use something else to prototype your idea first. Like figure out what is your idea, make sure you know what you want. And then once you know what you want, then you can start developing it, right? So let's say you figure out, okay, yes, we need mixed reality or pass through. We do need, we don't need hand tracking, but we need controllers. And man, we would really love to identify where the table is. Okay, now you know, uh, when you go to the building block, you need the pass through building block, you need the uh, MRUK building block, right, you need the hand tracking building block. So now it's an easy decision. Doop, doop, doop. You just press which building blocks you want, it'll all go in your scene, and then you'll be off to the races. All right. So please figure out ahead of time which ones you want, because that will save you a lot of time uh, when you uh, start. Okay, so there are some circumstances where you might not want to use building blocks. So uh, one circumstance is if you're if this one of the sample scenes uh, from the meta presence platform already has everything you want, then there's no point using a building block at that point, it'll just conflict with what you already have in your scene. Right. Uh, so that might be a scenario where you don't want to try and mess with the building blocks, you just want to focus on what's in the sample scene and build from there. The other one is if you plan to do excessive customization right if you're wanting to really. Uh, let's say the building blocks has the ability to pick up a cube, but now you want to do some weird stuff where not only you want to pick it up, but then you want the cube to do weird things and you're planning to do a lot of customization building blocks might not be the best starting point because it's very it's quite rigid at times right it's like it does really well what it's supposed to do, but anything beyond that it makes it really hard to customize not all building blocks are like that, but a lot of them are, especially the UI building blocks. So keep that in mind, you may want to consider starting instead from a sample scene, because those are a lot easier to customize than building blocks, right? But if you're wanting to do just basic stuff like, hey, all I need is just pass through and I need to pick up this object because I'm just planning to throw it as part of my game. Hey, building blocks are great. That'll probably be honestly the way easier than a sample scene. You can get started a lot faster. So yeah, keep that in mind, whether or not you're doing a lot of customization or not, okay? Let's see, how am I doing on time? I've got about three minutes. <laughs> All right. Five uh, minutes, so let's see. Five minutes? Okay, that's yeah, good. Perfect. All right. Uh, building block secrets. So these are some time-saving secrets for you. Uh, sometimes you'll add a building block in, and then you, you'll forget, like, what, what was changed in my scene? Uh, you'll feel afraid. You're like, what did it do? <laughs> uh, so one of the secrets is if you press on, after you've added a building block, if you press on the building block, you can actually see what it added to your scene you can see a little bit uh, on here on the screenshot it'll highlight in blue kind of what it's added so that will quickly give you at a glance uh, what uh, building blocks is added to your scene and of course later when you open up like OVR manager or anything else it'll show you at the top in the hierarchy or sorry in the inspector panel what are the different building blocks components that are already in your project and if you click on them it'll show you where they are in your scene. So that helps you really quickly identify what's changed and how you might be able to customize it uh, if you wanted to change anything or rename anything uh, like that, okay? Uh, and then of course, you can use building blocks. If you did wanna customize them, you can try to reverse engineer building blocks if you did wanna do heavy customization. Again, you can't really customize it a lot as it is, but at least you can see like, okay, what did it make for me? And how can I make my own in order to customize it? Okay, 
So those are some secrets that uh, you can use to leverage building blocks. All right, so just to wrap up, what are some of the key takeaways? Uh, avoid some of the common pitfalls like diving in and starting to make your application and spending five hours and then you try to build it and it's there's errors and you don't know what went wrong. Avoid, that's a very common mistake. People sometimes don't even build to the very last minute of the hackathon. They think everything's working in the editor. In fact, if it works on your headset on via link, that doesn't mean it's going to work when you build it to your headset. So don't even think link is like your ticket, right? Uh, build it, compile it, make the APK, transfer the APK to your headset, and then do it on the headset. Very, very like the first thing that should be the first thing you do so that it'll, uh, I guarantee you, it'll save you so much time. Leverage sample scenes, use those as templates for your project. It'll save you so much time, All right? Don't, uh, don't start developing this, I say on bullet point three building blocks, but really this goes for anything. Don't start creating and developing before you figure out what you wanna do. Figure out first what you wanna do and then go and create, unless it's like the basic stuff, like maybe part of your team members are figuring out what you're wanting to do. And then you're, the developer on your team is just getting the basic SDK downloaded and built to your headset. Okay, that's fine. That could save you some time. But don't start creating your application before you fully know what you want to do yet, because it will save you a lot more time if you just spend an extra hour or two figuring out exactly what you want, then you go and build it, save you a lot of time. All right. And then uh, cloud anchors, use cloud anchors, don't use shared spatial anchors, unless you're already an expert in shared spatial anchors, I guarantee you, you will uh, thank me later for that. <laughs> uh, and then despite all of these things I'm saying there's still some people's computers are just are just weird and I'm sorry to say and you you might have computer specific errors that happen uh, don't be shy to grab a mentor you know don't spend three hours trying to figure out why it's not working and then you grab a mentor try to you know use you search you know you can use AI to help you with your issues sometimes you can take a screenshot of your of what's in the unity console put it onto AI like chat GPT and it'll tell you what to do. So leverage some of those tools to save time. Okay. And some issues are just computer specific. It's nothing to do with you. It's not even maybe, maybe unity is to blame, <laughs> but it's like something specifically wrong with your PC. Something somehow didn't get downloaded in the background. Those things happen. They pop up every now and then. So again, going back to bullet point number one, the best way to catch those is to quickly build to your device early on. All right. And I think that's that's what we have for tips, tricks, and secrets to save you time. <laughs> Fair on. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Sean, for this condensed painkiller, I would say, <laughs> for the MetaPresence platform. So I'm looking at the questions, AI questions. We will go back to that. Uh, I don't see so much. Uh, Sean, could you recap the alternatives for the shared spatial anchors? One was local anchors. What was the other option? Uh, so local anchors and cloud save anchors. So when you see uh, Unity or sorry, Meta Presence Platform gives you the option to save your anchors in two places. One is on your device so that's on your headset. Nobody else has access to it. And the other one is you can save it to the cloud and download it later. Like if you restart your headset or anything. But the trick is if you're logged in with the same account on a second headset or another headset, you can also download that same anchor from the cloud. Uh, and so that's a trick to share your anchors between multiple headsets without having to register your app and without having to get it approved by Meta. And there's a whole process. It's a very complex process Perfect. to get shared spatial anchors working. Quick, quick Q&A. Uh, course recommends version 59 because it's being created during version 59. That's why. But uh, we have V66. So do you think that the best way is to use the V66? I mean, maybe or V67, it's being announced. Yeah, yeah, so don't, yeah, so um, I would say don't use the old Gorilla Zilla as a template for what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Uh, it is just for learning platform. purposes. Again, yeah. this course is being created, uh, uh, not so, actually, it was really recent, but still, uh, Meta is so fast <laughs> that uh, yeah. they are creating more. We are actually updating and then adding MRUK there, but uh, use your own Gorilla Zilla and learning environment different than your hacking environment. So whatever available, not beta version, but the available available on your headset, 
Uh, we can say V66 is perfect for that. So Gorillazilla course may not work with V66. So please for yeah. Gorillazilla and your things do with V59, uh, whatever it requires you uh, just for learning purposes. But V66 is perfect for your hacking environment because you want to probably benefit from the recent superpowers of uh, recent version. What is the relation of MRUK to MetaPresence platform? It's part of it, right? Part of it, yeah. Part of it okay. is it's a, a great way to quickly uh, utilize sofas, pictures, chairs, and, and to you know without having to do a lot of manual development. It can figure out how to spawn things in your room, right? So you don't have to figure out how come this is behind my wall or something. It takes care of all that for you. Uh, there's one question, but uh, could you do a rundown of work uh, Sam, maybe can you ask this question because it looks like it will take a lot of uh, effort, but we will have a technical questions channel will be opened right after this uh, workshop finished. So you can post that question there. Our team will be happy to answer, okay? For these kind of very specific uh, uh, questions. Uh, do we get all joint positions from the body tracking movement SDK? Where can I find joint references for body tracking upper extremity? I'm sorry, what was that, Ferran? Uh, like the, the, the body tracking, they are asking if uh, they can get all the joints there. Yeah, yeah, so there's, again, sample scenes will be your ticket. Download the, the movement SDK body tracking sample scenes. They're really fun to work with. I also cover them a little bit in GorillaZilla, the course. But yeah, all the bones, all the joints, all of that is provided. And you can see exactly how it works in some of those sample scenes. In a fifth uh, words, what is the difference of shared spatial and cloud-saved spatial anchors? Different. So shared shared spatial anchors re relies on Meta's account system, where you have to share it to other accounts, specific people, and uh, uh, it relies on that whole account system. All right, uh, cloud spatial anchors uh, does not rely on that. It's just it's the anchor is saved in the cloud, and everyone can request and download that anchor if you're on the same account. Is there any uh, building block about that or uh, spatial? Uh, just re the regular spatial anchors. Yeah, uh, okay. build, there's, yeah, it's not specific to cloud, but then you can change how you save it. Okay, we and have I, a I can some documentation as well. Yeah, we will have a learning resources, Dennis, and uh, maybe you can check one more time with Dennis, Sean, uh, then Dennis will reach in case there is any missing link there, we will add in Notion under learning resources. Um, could you, you could test multiple with cloud anchors like this, no problem with having the same account on both headsets. What, what was the question? No problem with the same account on both headsets? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can have like, we, we have 30 headsets with the same account. It's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, perfect. Perfect. Great. I think, uh, we have answered most of the questions. Uh, what is the best way to add occlusion in your MR scene? For example, when my virtual object is behind the real table. Meshing. Yeah, use the meshing. So MRUK, the MRUK sample scenes is great for that. There's uh, one sample scene where you can uh, you can try it out really quick. There's a little character that runs around and even lights the mesh and has shadows on the mesh and can hide behind your mesh. But yeah, use the meshing capability, which only works on the Quest 3. Well, is everyone using a Quest 3 during the hackathon? I'm not sure if those are yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, yeah, meshing uh, does not work that, on a Quest 2. Yeah, that's something that I would like to point out. If you have a Quest 3, if your friends have a Quest 3, bring everything you have. Because uh, the more Quest 3 means that you can do uh, maybe multiplayer, etc. So don't only see that as a multiplayer, uh, sorry, deployment device. So try to bring as many Quest 3 as possible, even though Meta is providing uh, quite a bit. Uh, at least we are trying to bring one per team if they don't. Yeah. Uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. I think we are uh, now uh, going to a level that we will go to from XR to AI, which is probably the most uh, uh, anticipated session because it's quite interesting that probably it's the first in uh, XR AI history, I would say that we are creating a session focusing on that. So we are really excited that we will now actually uh, start that with the masterminds of um, Lucas Moro and Fabian, which I'm also inviting. Sean, thank you again for all the Gorillazilla uh, courses, uh, all becoming master trainer. And 
I'm sure that uh, you will not make it to on uh, to the in person, but online people can reach out to you on the server. So if you have any questions, please ask under Meta um, uh, Meta uh, SDK or Meta All in XR SDK uh, Meta PP uh, channel that we will open specifically for this question. Okay. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, from one man mastermind to another, Fabian, yeah. Lucas. Fabian, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sean, good to see you too. Hey, Fahan, and hey, everyone. Let me uh, stop the recording so that we will have a separate AI-focused uh, session.